Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a very basic video on software defined radio or understanding GNU Radio Companion. And uh, these are like some of the basic video uh, on GNU Radio. I think uh, two videos ago, or I think two videos ago, yeah, I made a video on Fourier series how I can add up these. Uh, sinusoidal and cosinusoidal component together and so we can come up we can make our own uh, square wave and we actually looked at up to 13 different harmonics so now uh, we're basically going to in this particular video we're gonna look at actually a time sink or oscilloscope output of your cosine signal square wave and triangular wave and we're gonna look at their frequency spectrum and based on frequency spectrum, we're gonna see either our signal is odd and even signal. And also, we're gonna also look at explore constellation diagram as well, the constellation sync uh, that is also available in GNU Radio. So the idea of this actually to see the plotting, to, the, to see the time domain of uh, cosine, square, and triangular signal in time and frequency domain also observe the same thing in constellation diagram as well. So we can just quickly have a look at it. So the idea is this, the, the flow graph is the simplest uh, possible flow graph that is there. I'm taking three different signal sources. Uh, first source is a cosine sinusoidal source, keeping the frequency same, one, kilo, uh, one kilohertz. The square wave is also one kilohertz. And same thing for triangular wave as well. Uh, definitely is going into a throttle block. Um, and after throttle block, I'm also visualizing this in time sync and in frequency sync. I tried to use the same flow graph for uh, to use my constellation sync, uh, but if you were to look at it, the constellation sync only allows complex signals. So that's why um, I couldn't do it on real signals. So that's why I just I'm going to show you another flow graph for this uh, where I'm using my constellation diagram. So let me just simply close this and let's run it. Uh, I think one of my connections is gone. So just let me just do this. So now. Uh, let's just quickly look at it. Uh, let me zoom out from here. I think I have another box that is here. Let me just delete this quickly. And let's just zoom in on it. So let's just play this signal. Now, uh, okay, and here we go. So this is what I'm plotting right now. Uh, this is your, let me stop this for you. So let me just simply stop this. <laughs> Because all three waveform has the same amplitude, uh, we're going to look at all three for, uh, all three uh, type of signals uh, on the same plot. So if you were to look at this, as you can clearly see, you have a square wave that is going from zero to one, and that's where the peak is coming in. So that's where the transition takes place. So the highest point on your peak on a square wave is actually this point. So after it went up to one, it stayed there for a certain amount of time. When it came down, that's where the major peak is. This is where all three peaks are mating together. So this is your square wave. Also, this is your triangular wave. And this is the peak value of your uh, cosinusoidal or sinusoidal wave as well. So let me just simply zoom out from here. Let's start playing this. Control panel. Let me so that's the basic idea. So that's what you're visualizing at. Uh, auto scale. Just close this because. So this is what you were visualizing it. So let me just simply stop this. So this is where, so that's the peak where it went down. That's the highest point on your square wave, on your triangular wave, and on your sinusoidal wave. So you can just simply, if you want to just look at your cosine of the wave, you can just simply look at it. It's going from 1 to 1. And then you can also look at your square wave that is going from 0 to 1. And then you can also look at your triangular wave that is going from 0 to 1 as well. Now you can also simultaneously look at their spectrum as well. So for example, if you want to just observe your cosine signal, as you would expect to see, the Fourier transform of your cosine signal is actually uh, 1 half delta f minus f naught, f plus f naught, one half delta f. So delta means this. you're seeing this peak on your positive frequency side, on your negative frequency side as well. So that's why you're seeing this. So this is about one kilohertz right here. Now when you want to visualize a square wave, so this is your square wave. 
as we know from my last video, a square wave actually is a combination of a lot of these complex sinusoids. When you add them together, you will uh, have your square wave. So you will have a fundamental component, which is actually going to be a DC component lying somewhere around zero. Then you have your fundamental frequency, which is actually one kilohertz. Then the next frequency is going to be what? Three kilohertz, five kilohertz, seven kilohertz, and nine kilohertz. What do I mean by that? So whenever I have odd components in my sign in, in the Fourier series or in my frequency spectrum of my square wave, I can easily conclude this is actually a even signal, which means when you fold the signal from the middle, it will just fold on itself. That's a very important thing to understand because when you take a Fourier series of a square wave or a rectangular wave, and you will get odd harmonics like this. So for example, this is where we're getting odd harmonics. We have one, three, five, seven, and 11. These are the components that are present. I know for sure in time domain that signal is going to be an even signal. Even signal means that if I were to fold the signal from the center of my graph at zero, it will fold in itself. Same thing I can conclude from my triangular wave as well by looking at my, so this is the, this, and then we'll open up my triangular wave. And this is exactly what we are observing. So you will have your fundamental comp uh, uh, DC component, your fundamental component, then you will also see this is 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and so on. So this is how you are actually going to plot your cosinus or little triangular wave, square wave signal. And it's quite simple, you can just use a time sink and a frequency sink block. Let's look at our constellation block as well. So now if I want to see, look at constellation block, let me just simply open it up. So constellation block is quite simple. You have a frequency uh, right here. All you need is a constellation sync. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna look at one by one. So for example, if I were to just play this, this is a cosinus orbital signal. And as you know, cosinus orbital signals. So let me just simply have zero frequency. All right. So this is your zero frequency. And the amplitude that I have said is actually one, so it cannot go beyond one. So I know it's a cosinusoidal signal, sinusoidal signal. It actually completes a complete circle because the total period is about from zero to two pi, which means it's going to complete the entire circle, zero to two pi, zero to two sixty. So when I increase my frequency, as you can see, that it will go from one and all the way up to negative one. So this is what a swing looks. Like. So if I were to visualize this in time domain, you will see that it's going from positive one to negative one. This is how it's swinging. Now I can simply close this. This is what the constellation diagram looks like because you will have I and Q. I is in phase, Q is quadrature because it's a complex signal. So let me just simply change this to square wave. Click OK. Now you will see your square wave is going from one So as you can see, so this is how it's the, this is how the constellation diagram is moving. So you're going from zero to one, then coming down, zero to one, then coming down, zero to one, and coming down. So now when I increase my amplitude, the amplitude will go up. So it will it's just making a box shape. Even though it's also completing it, but it's not a circle, but you can you can clearly see that it's also making a box shape that is going from zero to one and so on. Now when I do the exactly the same thing, when I change this to triangular wave, uh, let me just quickly go here, or sawtooth or triangular wave, when I, when I play this, you will also observe this, this will be going in. So this is actually making that diamond shape that is going from zero to one, then from 0.5 and then coming down and zero one. And, and this is how you would actually use your constellation diagram to observe your Square wave, triangular wave, cosinus orbital wave. Uh, these are some of the common waves that we normally use in communication system. The square wave and rectangular wave plus cosinus orbital and sinus orbital wave. These are the, uh, I mean, the primary uh, signal uh, formations, uh, signal sources that we use. But uh, it's just the way you can visualize these things in GNU radio. So I hope you find this video important, uh, useful. It was one of the basic videos. If you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section. And please, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.